Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Green Industry Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about setting goals and how we can actually achieve our goals. And to help us in this conversation is my friend James Mansky from Nebraska. Welcome back to the show, James. Paul, appreciate. Yes, yeah, so, excited to be here. Yeah, so we're going to start uh, ten years out like a fishing, and we're going to reel it into five years, three, two, one, ninety-day increments, and talk about setting goals those presumptuous big goals, and then actually making the actionable um, bite-sized um, progress so we can actually achieve these goals. So tell us a little bit about how you set your goals, and then later on in the program, I want to kind of share about my vision board and what I uh, like to do to set goals. Sure. Yeah, the goals, is, it's such a big part of what you're doing every single day, right? Because if you don't know where you're going, then you're running blind. So it's setting that big goal first and that's that big vision. So 10 years from now, or even 20, whatever you want it to be, but it needs to be measurable and it needs to be big enough. So then when you reach it, you're not wishing you would have done more, right? So it's gotta be something that's that's so massive that you need to be able to feel and live and breathe. And when I started doing that, then I started you know, finding people that could help align with that goal. And it's such an important thing because you can't get to where you want to go without surrounding yourself with the people that are already there or that are doing it. So that's kind of what helped me build my goals was just seeing what other industries, what other successful people have done, um, and not even just in business with relationships and families too, um, and spirituality. So you want to see all that stuff to know where you're going to go first. And it's different for every person. Some people might be in a completely different boat 10 years from now than um, other people. So you want to just kind of tailor that to yourself and your personal beliefs and your your family. When did you start setting goals? And James, share with me a goal that you actually have achieved that, that you know, you had uh, written down. Yeah. I mean, the 10-year goal is still very out there and it's always changing. So every year or two, um, it's shifting. So it's either getting bigger or it's being uh, expanded a lot more on. Uh, but I'm never losing sight of that big 10 year goal because that's what I break down when we'll talk about is the five year, three year, one year and 90 days um, for reaching that big goal. So you're constantly making that fluid, which is going to trickle down into what you're doing day to day. So there's always been goals that I set too low early on, you know, when I was a teenager, early 20s, um, even early 30s. And I realized I just wasn't dreaming big enough and creating that big vision. So it's something that you always have to be revising and changing and updating as you're going along. What is the 10 year goal that you currently have, if you don't mind sharing it publicly? Yeah. So there's, there's a couple different things. So it's um, professional wise, like in my business, what's that look like? And it's going to be an X amount of sales revenue, which we're probably going to hit even closer to than 10 years. And then it's also having five locations, which we're hoping to have more than that in in 10 years, but it's, it's taking what you're currently doing and then kind of multiplying it out as well for that, for personally, you know, it's impacting million of lives with either me personally or consulting or speaking, however I can just impact people. And financially it's creating passive income where it allows me to, you know, reach all those other goals too, but creating it through real estate and investments and everything else, that's, that's going to help me to impact all those lives. So they all kind of tie into each other, um, but they are separate types of goals. So then how do you put this into action? Uh, we're uh, having this conversation live. And by the way, you guys can drop a comment and uh, we'll get to your questions. Uh, I told you guys we're going to start this on YouTube and then eventually get on other platforms. So get a little wild tonight. We're on LinkedIn and hopefully we're on LinkedIn. And then um, next week, maybe we'll add a little Facebook action, Twitter. So we'll, we'll keep this going. But you guys can let us know uh, comments that you have. So we're on talking on this on Monday night, James. Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening. How does this correlate into your actual life tomorrow? Yeah, it's a great question. So no matter what, you're always re-engineering it or reverse engineering it, right? So you easily can break it into from your 10-year to your 5-year by just dividing by half. Um, and you're going to break it down all the way to one year. And if you know what's going to be need to be done to keep on track for that big 10 year goal, 
if what you're doing day to day is not getting you towards that goal, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. So is it going out, you know, with friends to the bars? Is it watching too many movies or TV when you could be, you know, working on your family life or professional development or whatever it is? So I always have that in the back of my head. So stuff tonight and tomorrow morning is what I'm doing with every moment of my time getting me closer to those goals or is it pushing me back or holding me back? So that's just something that's that I always have in front of me is, is this task, is this duty, is this conversation, is it building assets or is it creating a liability? Wow. <clears throat> we had a comment come in. Kyle said he tried to check us on LinkedIn and forgot his password. So I think that was really convicting, James, because I can catch myself scrolling on YouTube or Instagram or things like that and it's just vanity because it's not going to influence that five-year goal, that 10-year goal, or even this year. It's just, it's just wasted time. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it's, you, you grow into it, right? So we're in such a tech age now where everybody's on social media, but what would happen if you took that one to two hours of social media and read books with it? How much more could you learn and grow in your business and personal life? Or what if you went to the gym for an hour instead of I, was, I wasn't going to say it, James. I wasn't no. going to say it, man. Uh, these guys tell me I don't have time. I don't have time, Paul. I don't have time. Like I, I can't miss. I, I, I spent at least 30 minutes at the gym six days a week. It's like I can't miss it. It's just like my favorite part of the day. Exactly. And that's and it's still building yourself. Right. So that should still be in your personal goals is to be in the best shape, because if you have that big 10 year financial goal, or professional goal, but your health's in bad shape, I mean, then it's all worthless, right? So you want to be able to have a good life when you reach those goals too. And I think health's one of the biggest things. Um, but yeah, it's it's weighing the difference because we all have the same amount of time in a day, same amount of days in a year, but what's going to make one person want it more than others? So that's always what is also in the back of my mind too, is who's out there working harder than me right now? Like, is there anybody working harder than me at 11, 12, one in the morning or 5 a.m. to work out or 8 p.m. to work out or just to do some extra uh, building of my personality and my personal self mm -hmm. when others are on social media? So that kind of motivates me as well is seeing what I could be doing that the masses aren't. That's good. Uh, we're getting a message here from uh, StreamYard, what we're using, and they're saying we're having an issue with LinkedIn. So I don't know. It's my first time trying to go live on LinkedIn, but we're we're successfully on YouTube. I believe you guys can let me know in the comments. And of course, on the uh, major podcast platforms, guys, the show's really getting a lot of traction. So thanks everyone out there in podcast land uh, for tuning in. I love goal setting, James. I'm, I'm really excited. You kind of sent me your syllabus and I saw goal setting. I'm like this. I, I'm excited to pick your brain because um, iron sharpens iron. And so uh, you're saying make a goal 10 years cut it in half five years. And then how do you kind of bring that down to the two and one year plan? Sure. So I usually go to three years because it's, you know, it's kind of half of, of five. So I go a three year goal and then a one year, which is measurable. So once I know at least what the one year is, and it doesn't have to be, you know, exactly one tenth of what your 10 year goal is, because the 10 year goal could be, you want to have a billion dollar company. It doesn't mean it's 1 billion or 10 billion, right? So it could be whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But when you get it down to the the one year, you need to start making it really measurable. We need to hit this in sales. We need to have this many team members in each division. We're going to start this many new crews. And then what I do is I break it down into quarters, right? So it's a lot more measurable. So then each quarter, we know month by month, if we're off target from a goal, or if there's where we've already exceeded it, then our goals were too low. But at least that allows us to use the first two months as a benchmark of what needs to be done the third month. Like we need to hit sales even harder this third month of this quarter because we're a little bit short. Or what else can we do to to beef up this this production or lifestyle, whatever it is that goal is. Um, so it, it just trickles down from that big vision no matter what. You're always looking at what you can do right now that's going to take you to that that end game or that end goal of yours and just being able to, to visually see it. So if it's in front of you every day, you're not going to forget it. You know what the big goal is. You know what the, the one quarter goal is, 
and you're constantly striving to reach and exceed that. So I, I recommend agree. putting it everywhere, like put it on your mirror in your bathroom, put it on your fridge, put it on your phone. I do Google calendars and I'll update it with just, it'll pop up randomly throughout the month of here's the big 10 year goal. Like just so it's always in the back of my head. Wow. That's really good, James. Uh, shout out to Kyle Blesson from New York watching in the YouTube comments. Thanks for joining the program. You guys can drop a question for James uh, and myself. The topic tonight is goal setting. You kind of alluded to it a little bit there, James, but how do you uh, write these down? And then how do you um, track them, especially like with your team and where there's other people involved with the, the, the uh, sales in your business? How are you kind of measuring this and, and staying on track with your goals? Yeah, great question. I mean, it all comes for business wise or professional goals. It always comes down to knowing your numbers, right? So what's our sales for last month? What's our sales month to date? Um, so it's pulling those P&L reports from whatever bookkeeping software you're using. Mm -hmm. And I like doing month over month and also previous period so I can see what it was 2021, 2020, and just see if we're in line for that growth year over year. So it's a it's your KPIs, whatever those might be, if it's number of stops in a day for fertilizing or irrigation or money brought in generated by each division or each technician or each crew. But then as a whole, it's okay, what did this, what did we as a company do in sales or what is on the books for new estimates, new leads? So there's so many KPIs of what uh, reaching those goals could look like, whether you know, it could just be phone calls in a day because then, you know, your advertising's working. If you're getting a hundred phone calls a day, you know, you're going to get sales from that. It's just going into the funnel. Um, so it's, it's, it's a kind of a combination of everything, but it's all based on data, like the data of your business, the data of your books, the data of your KPIs and production. Cool. In the comments, we got Phil's lawn care. What's up, man? I uh, love, he, he's the uh, sidewalk specialist man he cleans up those overgrown sidewalks and posts those viral videos on youtube good to see you phil i got to get you on the program here soon um when you say you put it on your mirror you put it in google calendar like it sounds like you have it have these goals written down in various places like can you walk me through like how, how you do that on your end sure i mean with the mirror it's easy or my window outside of my office i mean it's just a dry erase marker oh okay so I will have X, 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 X by this date, or we will be um, this size company by this date. We will have this many millionaires working in our organization by this date. So I That's constantly a cool am goal, seeing that. Man. That's um, a cool goal, James. Thanks. You, yeah, you have this vision to have millionaires produced through your ecosystem. Correct. That's yeah. Great. And that's because once you get to those goals, I mean, if you have a family, great, you can take them along and they can, um, enjoy that experience with you, but it's not fun if you have a jet and you're only fly flying it by yourself, right? So you want to create that ecosystem of winners that you're elevating and, and aligning all of your goals so that the company goals are met. And in that same, in that same system that they're getting pulled up with you too. So I got to get a dry erase. My, my Sharpie ain't going to cut it. I got to get a dry erase marker and write that on in my bathroom, I got a mirror so I could just write with it. I didn't even think about that, a dry erase marker. And then I can erase it with like Windex or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a yeah. great idea. And, and you can always add to it, edit it, you know, that way you're seeing it every single day, morning and night. That is so good. Now I do have a vision board and, uh, this, this thing is full. Um, I got thumb, thumb pin tacks. I don't know the name of them and like a felt vision board. And I have all my goals written on there. It's in my bedroom. And uh, I love that thing because I, I have some pictures that represent the goals, some words. And, uh, you know, that subconsciously, I'm looking at that every single day. Yeah. And, and even with the stuff on your vision board, and that's still really important too. But um, do you have cars or planes or boats on there, you said? Um, let me look. I ha So I have, um, well, I, I, I share with you some of the stuff I have. Um, one of my favorite broadcasters and he passed away last year, um, Rush Limbaugh is down in um, Palm beach. He has a, a mansion in Palm beach, which is big money in Palm beach, but he actually had his studios in his home. And so every day he had the largest radio show in the world, but he did it in his home. 
he didn't he didn't go to like some office or whatever in his mansion on the beach and so i have his literal house it's his exact house in palm beach um and so i have that on my vision board not that i want to live in that specific property but that you know i I want the green industry podcast uh one day to you know how cool would that to be to be broadcast on like you know on a beachfront property or whatever so that's an example of a of a, a home i have that represents my dream i also have um uh J- not jake paul logan paul's studio uh down in puerto rico um he re- recently had gary v on there and i took a screenshot laminated it printed it out because he has a really cool studio that he built in i believe it's his house in puerto rico so anyway those are a couple of my goals and then i have um some families that i just really respect husband and wife married uh, one guy's got six kids him and his wife have six kids healthy marriage happy family and so i have a picture of them um because you know one day i'd like to have you know, a wife and multiple children and things like that. So each picture kind of represents something like that. But, um, I don't have a, I don't have a private jet. I don't like flying. So honestly, (laughs) I, I, I I do not like airplanes. I don't like flying. I'd rather drive. So I, to me, uh, a a billionaire could tell me tomorrow, Hey, I got you a private jet. And I'm like, give it to someone else. You know what I mean? I just, I don't like flying. I, 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 I like being on the ground. Sure. So with all those, all the things you have on the vision board, I think a big and important thing that everybody needs to understand is, okay, you have that house, right? Or you have that car or you have that airplane, but until you actually experience it, so you need to get out there and sit in that Lamborghini or Mm -hmm. fly on a private jet or be in that studio just so you can feel what it's like, right? Mm -hmm. You need to smell it. You need to soak it all in visually you need to feel it and that subconsciously will help build your goal towards like reaching that but if you just have something on the vision board that you've never seen before you don't know what it's like so surrounding yourself with people that might have that or that you can go in and even do an open house like that would have been cool to do in in russia's house when it went on the market like just fly down there drive down there walk through it, see it and be like, I will have something like this. That's so I think it's very me. important too, just to feel that. that yeah. Dream. Now I have, I have a silver play button on my, my vision board and I, I have friends that have gold play buttons and silver, but I have one friend. He was the number one YouTuber in the world in 2013, 14. He had 13 billion views and um, he has multiple gold plays, multiple silver plays, and they're just sitting in his closet. And I got to go to his home and uh, I got to touch the gold play button, which you get for a million subscribers and the silver play. I mean, he had multiple of them. This guy is one of the top YouTubers. Um, I was just looking the other day, Mr. Beast. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. Yep. He has like 14 billion views. My friend had 13 billion. Like he, his was back in the day. He's retired and wealthy and living the dream, man. I'll, That's off incredible. the radar a little bit. But I did when I, when I held his gold play button and I, held his silver play button it was like okay you I, feel it you feel yeah, it inside that, of you mm-hmm. I, I can see it now how, let me ask you this because I, I i listen to a lot of these personal development guys and i heard one guy say the other day it's good to have it like way out there the big goal that seems if you tell someone you're afraid they're going to laugh at you and th- that's good but it's also good to have it where it's like you can actually see the light in the tunnel. You can actually accomplish it. So how, how do you gauge the, the, um, predicament there? Am I, am I making sense? Or- yeah, no, you are. Um, I think it's a combination of two things. I mean, a, if it's financial or business related, there's proper ways to forecast your business based off the growth. So you take the last top months of last year and that's your benchmark for this year. So if you did 50,000, was your top month in 2021, you need to be striving for at least 50,000 this year, every single month. So there's, there's certain things like that, that you can put into place um, and then forecast it out year after year. And if there's 10 to 50% growth or whatever that is, you can kind of plan it that way, but it's also limiting yourself thinking that you're only going to grow 10% or 15% when you need to start coming up with how do I grow a hundred percent? And then that's when you start thinking of different ways to do it. Okay. You might not be able to do it all internally with the people you have now, but could you buy a business? Yeah. That would easily double your business in one year. Okay. Could you double it again, 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 or merge with other companies? So there's, or create partnerships. So when you start creating the big, big vision, 
you subconsciously will start finding different ways to achieve it. So I, you have to have a balance of both, but you don't want to say, I want to do a, you know, a hundred million dollars this year. If last year you only did two, does that make sense? So you have to still, it has to be reachable, but when you shoot for those big goals, then you start realizing there's other avenues that you haven't thought about yet that you can implement into business and life and uh, personal development. Yeah, that's good. Kyle up in New York asked James, oh, uh, here, let me, let me do this. Uh, how about that? Perfect. Thank you. See, I told you guys I get I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to get better at this quarterbacking thing. So there you go. I'll let you read the question. Yeah. When do you suggest you edit goals if something happens that is a major setback? You know, if if there's a major setback, I don't really edit them. I just adjust where it's going, right? So let's say you get in a car accident or you're you know, you break a leg and you can't go out and physically do it. You can still adjust a little bit and say, okay, this two months, I wasn't able to perform as much, or I wasn't able to work out. But if you still know what you need to do in the long run, that short setback is, is just a blip on your, your lifelong, um, like calendar radar, right? It's so small that it shouldn't affect you at, at all. You need to look past that. Okay. And even in some of those tough times, you have to be able to pivot. So how many people pivoted in 2020 when everybody got shut down? Restaurants did by offering food to go, right? Or mm -hmm. liquor to go. Like whoever pivots first during those setbacks or finds a new avenue, they're the ones that are real winners. And that's what a true entrepreneur is. You find those stressful or those difficult situations, those hurdles, and you need to look the other way. Like what else can I be doing instead? If this is really tough, there's got to be something else. What's so you, been some adjustments and pivots, James, that you've personally made with your goals and everything you've been building? You know, there's, I feel like we're, we're pivoting all the time because supply chain issues, right? Mm -hmm. You have to figure out what to do. So are you going to buy everything in bulk in the beginning of the year? Or are you going to suffer through those price increases month after month, year after year? Um, for what people are going through right now. And even if it's, you know, it's, it's something where you just have to, you're finding it out as you go. Um, I can't really think of any off the top of my head, except vehicle shortages right now. I mean, you, we ordered vehicles last February, we got one, wow. uh, so we had to find different avenues. So we went different markets, different places, instead of just accepting the fact that we couldn't get a new vehicle beginning of last year. And then certain things happen where, um, just an instance last Friday, last Thursday, another company had bought two brand new vehicles and they no longer are in business. So our rep that deals with all of our fleet vehicles reached out to me and I told him, I said, let me know as soon as anything comes in, even though it's not ours, I'll pay more. And he called me, he said, there's these two vehicles. Do you want them? I said, yes. So everything happens. If you just put in that effort to um, not accept no for an answer or not accept that the hurdle is blocking you from where you want to go. Yeah. And that brings up another point I want to touch on and that's relationships. So how have, how important have relationships and connections and, and connecting with the right people been in opening up these opportunities and doors for you to, to reach your goals? Oh, relationships are by far the best thing that you need to focus on because you need to surround yourself with winners, with people that are going places, with people that can help you out and are true friends and mentors than people that are dragging you down. And just being around those people, A, you learn something new. They can help you in situations that you've never been in, but they might have, or they might know somebody that has. Um, and it's also just, I mean, they're helping building the vision too, right? So you wanna always surround yourself with people that are already where you're at or where you want to go. And if sure. you're not yet, then you need to find those people and figure out a way to be in their, in their environment, in their bubble. So no matter what it is you're going for, you have to seek out those people. That's so good. If you guys have any questions for James, um, as we land the plane here, no pun intended, um, go ahead and let me know in uh, the comments how uh, if you if you recognize somebody who is is further ahead than you, I know Rush Limbaugh, you know, passed away. So I can't you know, he's I don't have that opportunity. But um, let's say he was or we'll use Logan Paul for an example. Not, I, I'm not a Logan Paul 
I just like a studio. Okay. But how do I, how, what's your advice to when there's somebody who's further ahead of you in, an, in a certain area of life? Um, what's that way to get into that ecosystem, to make those relationships, to, to, to make it a win-win um, for these folks? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I don't think that there's anything that you should never be asking for something, right? It's got to be genuine. So with everybody that I've surrounded myself with, it's genuine people, it's friendships, it's connections, it's being that person for them, um, for the people like Logan Paul or a Rush Limbaugh similarity. I mean, what else could you do to to just help them, provide provide value to them? Maybe they just need an intern for you know a couple of weeks or whatever it might be, but you're just trying to give, 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 where in that instance, you can soak up as much as you can by being around them. But for me, what it was is, is just constantly networking. I mean, everywhere I go, everywhere I go to dinner, is it a restaurant that those winners are gonna eat at or is it a Taco Bell, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm always surrounding myself with people that I wanna learn from, I wanna be around. And you'll find friends in that. You'll find some fake people, some people that are not so good to hang, hang out with or be around, but you have to learn that. You have to know. How, how do you people. decipher the the winners and, and the quality people with the you will use the word fake with with those kind of folks? How, how do you have that discernment to know this person's bad? This person's good. Yeah, it's I think it's more of just how are they as a human being? If they're rude to just as an example, the wait staff or anything like I, I probably don't want to even talk or introduce myself to them wow. um, or if they treat, you know, the opposite sex poorly or like all that stuff, it just goes back to your values. Would you want to be associated with somebody that doesn't have good values or brings your values down? And it doesn't matter what level they are. They could be, you know, a multimillionaire or billionaire, but if they had, don't have good values, then you probably don't want to be around them anyways. So it's just through that, those conversations that you'll find that out. Um, but majority of people that I've met and that I still surround myself with, they're all really good people. They would do anything to help each other out. And they want to, you know, better themselves and help others along the way. How do you then um, deal with people that maybe were in your your main circle in the past, and you're trying to go to the next level? You're winning, you're succeeding, you're promote getting promoted in uh, favor, next level. And these folks are living raggedy, and they're just kind of. You can tell they're not they're not going to put in the work and the um, character to get to where you know, you're advancing to, how do you slowly distance yourself and, and, you know, show respect? And I don't know if I'm wording this question the right way, but there, there's people lingering and hanging on that, that, you know, are, are, are like weights and they're pulling you back. How do you, have you ever gone through those situations and how do you navigate that? Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's friends you have from high school or college or whatever communities, and you just have to make the decision. Like, is this, building me up or helping me get to the goal or is it not? And if they want to change and if they want to surround themselves with you now, like what are they going to do to follow you along the way or to elevate themselves as well? Because if they're constantly a downer, if they're a liability or they're, they're always negative, like all that stuff comes back into your mindset. So if you're seeing that you're falling back into those, those roots or the negativity or the, I can't do this, like all of that stuff needs to be cut out from you personally. Mm -hmm. And once you make that decision that I'm only going to be hanging around winners, I'm only going to be positive. I'm only going to be, you know, bettering myself and going the extra mile. They kind of just fall off on their own because they see you start to do those steps and those, and those milestones. And you just don't have time for it anymore. Like, no, I, I'm not going to go to the neighborhood bar on a Wednesday night to watch, you know, sports. <laughs> yeah. Like there's stuff going on. I've got stuff to plan. I've got, I'd rather go to the gym at 8 PM or 9 PM on a Wednesday night then yeah. take myself back down to, you know, where all those people are just are, I'm not going to say negative, but they're just wallowing or drinking their sorrows away and they're complaining. Um, so you just kind of pull yourself out. And like I said, the good people that have been with you or want to go with you or are doing great things, they'll stick with you and they see, and they encourage you. But the people that don't encourage you or don't support you or trying to tear you down or, or say, why are you working so much? Or why can't you just be satisfied? Do you, do you really want to hang out with those people anyways, if they're not building you up? Yeah, that's, that's so good. 
Well, guys, I know uh, James has a, a lot going on with his schedule. I really appreciate you joining the show. Um, is there anything I'm leaving out? I know uh, goal setting, and uh, I already got an assignment to get a dry erase marker, um, and, and I'm going to get that on my mirror. I already got my vision board. So is there anything I'm leaving out that, that you want to share with those listening right now um, of how we can achieve our goals? Yeah, I think it's no matter what. I mean, no matter who's holding you back, like like what this – uh, blessing property maintenance is saying too, if it's family or friends, it doesn't matter. Like you have your own goal for you, your family, your kids, whatever it is. If you are getting it pushed back from family, from friends, from co like that shouldn't even be in your mind. You need to just focus on what you're doing. And if you're constantly doing the right thing and elevating yourself, that's all that matters. If you give it your best and don't worry about the negativity, then you know, you're going to be succeeding in life. And one thing that I did early on too, is I just limited myself with my, my goals. I mean, I was content and you never want to be plateau or content. And even when you think you're making enough money or your family's okay, you can't help a lot of other people if you're not making a lot of money. So how much would you rather give back to your community? Because giving a thousand dollar check to your school or community or whatever it is, your, your organization um, doesn't feel as good as writing a million dollar check. So you can help more people by increasing those goals as well. And I think that's very important is as we grow, we have to incorporate giving back as well. Well said, James. How can people connect with you? Yeah, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, James Mansky, um, jamesmansky.com as well. We've got actually a conference coming up here in Omaha in June. And for any green industry, irrigation, all that stuff, we're going to be talking about business as well and just elevating yourselves to the next level. But I'd be happy to help. If anybody has questions, shoot me a DM or an email and uh, help you through whatever you're going through. Cool. Well, James, I appreciate the high value content that you continue to bring to our program. And uh, thank you for taking time out of your evening to, to be a guest on the Green Street Podcast again. Definitely, Paul. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. See ya.